Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series 98 Rise of the Beast Voyager Class Cheetor. So let's start off by taking a look at the packaging and then we'll get into the review. So of course up front we have Transformers on the side. We have 98 Studio Series with Cheetor and a really cool Maximal symbol. A really cool looking artwork shot of Cheetor in his Cheetah mode. We have a really cool open window displaying the figure and the packaging. We have the Rise of the Beast logo at that top corner there. Also on the top of the box, if we do turn to the side, there's a really cool close-up artwork shot of Cheetor in his Cheetah mode really cool sharp claws and teeth with some bright red eyes that looks quite nice we have 98 studio series we have voyager class in several different languages on the back he transforms in 24 steps there's two product shots one of him in his robot and cheetah mode there's also an included backdrop that i will show in this review it is the jungle discovery most likely a pretty important scene especially for cheetor and on the final side we have a really cool battle pose of cheetor in his robot mode with his two spear accessory weapons looking very cool there and that is pretty much it for the packaging, so let's now get into the review. Here we have Cheetor in his Cheetah mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details, starting at the very front with that Cheetah head. Really nice green for the eyes and some good metal gray for the face with some really nice black for the nose. Really nice sculpted in ears. There's actually quite a few dark blue spots on the top of the head, which looks pretty cool. There's some really nice mechanical detailing done in good metal gray at the shoulder. And of course, we do have to address the main complaint people have had with this figure, which is actually the color scheme. A lot of people really don't like the dark uh, color scheme they've gone with this figure, like the good metal gray, the really dark kind of orangish brown mixture. I actually think it works. That's just my opinion. Of course, we are all very used to the original Beast Wars Cheetor design, which is very bright colors, you know, bright yellow, bright blue. There's a few black dots in there, here and there. Do I still prefer the original Beast Wars design? Absolutely, that's my preferred. I still think it works in this one, because of course, this is live action. The other one was animation, so they're obviously going to be making several huge changes here and there. They don't want to do a one-to-one, -one, you know, exact copy and just put it in live action. So if they want to do a few, you know, uh, changes or spins on the original design, that's perfectly fine by me. As for for the rest of the front legs. Overall, pretty well designed. Not a big fan of that exposed hand. Would have been nice if there was a panel to cover that, but that's a very minor complaint. I do like the nails, very sharp. Uh, really well designed there. As for the main body or the midsection, overall pretty well designed, like all the dots there. Uh, these two slots are for weapon storage. I'll get into that in just a second, but I do like how well compact and sleek it is. As for the back legs, pretty similar to the front, you know, it's just that same kind of orangish brown mixture, except of course the paws are done in a kind of a gray this time instead of that orangish brown. And I do like the design of the tail, I do like all these individual kind of gears and sections and panels, looks very mechanical. Also, kind of an interesting design tr uh, trait they did with this one, if you have the original uh, Kingdom Beast Wars Cheetor, I'll bring that figure out in just a second for comparison. On that figure, you know, the polka dots or the dots are very well spread out, you know, they're on the legs, they're on the back section, the belly, uh, the head, everywhere. Everywhere. On this one, it's really just on the head and the top section here, so it's a bit different. So, um, let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section down below. But now, for articulation, the head can move side to side, slightly up and down. The mouth can open and close. As for the front legs, of course, they can kick forward and back. There is rotation, a knee bend. There is also rotation at the paw, and there is some uh, slight up and down movement as well, which is pretty nice to see. As for the back legs, of course, they can kick forward and back and out to the side because these are actually the robot mode legs. So there's quite a bit of articulation here. Uh, there is a hinge here, but it's actually locked into place via this panel here. So if you do want more articulation of legs to, uh, to do some more dy dynamic poses, you can untab this. If you want to, there is some rotation uh, in and out or side to side like that and forward and back. And that is pretty much it for articulation. There is one more section, which is a bit of a disappointment. So actually, I, did, uh, I do remember doing a news video on this video when it was first real and has repulse and i thought it looked pretty cool um and i don't know if you're remembering me making that video it was quite a while ago you know a couple of weeks ago um and it was pretty positive i was really looking forward to it but my main hope or worry was the tail because i uh, distinctly remember the kingdom beast wars cheetor it was an okay figure it's just fine again i will be making a comparison in just a sec but my main complaint for that figure was the articulation especially especially in the cheetah mode there was no articulation in the head or the tail because as you all know the tail was actually its success for that figure and that was not a good accessory so I do have to say right now before I even get into the accessories I'm so glad they didn't do that tail whip accessory with this figure because I would have been so disappointed but just getting to my points unfortunately the articulation for this tail uh, section on this figure is slightly better I was hoping maybe for like a ball joint or a hinge you know uh, uh, side to side or something but unfortunately it's really just up and down so of course there's a hinge here and a hinge at the base again that is an improvement over the kingdom chewer version I was just hoping maybe for some more hinges 
just so you could put it in some more dynamic, dynamic poses like he's running into battle. That's my only complaint, really. Everything else is very good. Definitely a huge improvement over the Kingdom 1. There was no rotation at the head with that figure, so I'm really glad we got some with this figure. But now for some comparisons, here he is with the Kingdom Beast Wars Deluxe Class Cheetor, which... I have to say, at the time when I first got it, I thought it was a pretty good figure because I'd never had a uh, Chewer figure just in general ever before, like a mini con, you know, third party masterpiece. That was my first one. So I thought it was pretty good at the time. Of course, in comparison to the Studio Series version, it is a worse figure. There was breakage problems, never like the accessory. The eyes, that was the one huge thing that everyone was talking about at the time. The eyes, there was really well, really weirdly designed, you know, it kind of looked possessed. I never really liked that. So um, there was some problems. So I do have to say the Studio Series version isn't a improvement. Which design do I like more? I will always like the original design more. Actually, do let me know in the comment section down below of the designs, the Sioux Series Rise of the Beast or the original. Um, which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. But I have to say, if you want a good, you know, original classic Beast Wars Cheetor, this is a good figure, but if you just want a Cheetor figure in general, of which one's better, I highly recommend the Studio Series version. That is just my opinion, but they do look pretty cool next to each other. Now for some other comparisons, here he is with the Studio Series Rise of the Beast 100 Deluxe Class Bumblebee, and his review is on the channel right now, so make sure you go check that out after this one. And of course, you can recreate that really cool scene in the trailer when they're, you know, driving or running alongside each other on that big open field, and I actually really like that scene because it actually shows how massive Cheetor is in scale or in comparison to Bumpy. He's huge, so that's pretty cool. I really do like that scene. And they look very nice next to each other. Of course, I could do a much more dynamic pose with him running, but at the time, um, you know, in this video, that's pretty much what you got. <laughs> and now for one final comparison for this mode, here he is with the Core Class RC, and her review should be on the channel very, very soon. And that is pretty much it for comparison. So now for accessories. This is another aspect of this figure that I do like a lot more than the Kingdom version because that was some weird kind of tail scythe thing. Never understood that. But he actually does come with two spear weapons. So they can come on. I'm going to show that later in his robot mode because for that feature, you really can't do anything for this mode. But how they store is there is actually a tab right here. And I did show them earlier. There is two slots. Of course, you can do them either side. Does not matter. You can have them facing forward if you want to. But how they instruction show is they actually are angled back like that and sometimes they can be a bit of trouble to tab in there we go just tab them in like that and they are not identical they are slightly different in sculpt i'll do a more you know in-depth look at them whenever uh Chidor is in his robot mode but there we have the weapon storage i think it's okay um i've mentioned this before in past videos i do typically cut a little bit of slack on figures that have like you know shields or swords because it's never really the easiest to store them because you know they're big long staffs or poles so especially in an animal mode it's pretty hard to you know um easily store it and it actually look good i think it's okay it's just okay, but that is pretty much it for this mode, so let's actually now get down to transformation. I'm just going to put the accessories off to the side. You can close the mouth. What you're going to want to do is separate the entire shoulder section from the head. It's actually a very secure tab. How it taps into places, there is a slot right there, and there is a tab right there. So just separate that. Do the same thing on the other side. Just do it like that. And now what you can do is go to the back, lift up this panel. There is a post right there, and there is a port right there just like that, and then you can just kind of bring the legs out. We'll get to those in just a little bit. What you're gonna to wanna to do is collapse this neck section in like that, and then we can actually focus on the uh, arms. So you're going to rotate these forward, collapse the paw, rotate the hands, and then there is this panel section right here. This is going to flip forward just like that. I'm actually gonna zoom out just a tad bit. So there we go. Do the same thing on the other arm, so just rotate that forward, flip this little side panel, Rotate the hand, bring that little claw section out, and there we have the arms all done. And then what you can do is open up the chest that will reveal the robot mode head. Open up this panel on the back as well. Then what you're going to do is collapse the animal head, bring out the robot mode head. And then, of course, you just collapse both panels, and there we have the head all done. I'm going to raise the camera just a tad bit so you can see what I'm doing. Then what you can do is extend these sections here, rotate them around like that, straighten out the foot, same on the other side, so just rotate this around. And if you're wondering how that panel tab in place, there is a tab on the inside of this and there is a slot right there, just like that. And then you just bring these panels down to form the lower part of the leg, like that. 
and there, just gonna straighten them up a tad bit. Straighten everything out, there we go. And then as for the last step, you just collapse this tail against the back and just quickly straightening him up. Here we have Cheetor in his robot mode. Let's take a look at the details. So here we have Chudor in his robot mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details, starting at the very top with that head sculpt. Really nice green for the eyes, some silver for the eyebrows, and really nice gunmetal gray for this entire battle mask, and some kind of orangish brown for the main helmet section. I do like the shoulders with all this mechanical detailing done in gunmetal gray. I really do like, again, that nice kind of orangish brown mixture. I really do like all the little uh, black dots at the bicep, some more mechanical detailing at the form, and the hand mostly done in that gray. I do like the almost kind of Wolverine claws at the hands as well, looking very cool. As for the chest, I really do like all these uh, individual kind of layers done in almost a silver gunmetal gray. That looks super cool for the stomach region or ab section. Some more of that gunmetal gray on the sides and some more of those black dots. Looking very, very cool. As for the crotch and top of the legs, some more of that silver. Looking pretty cool. Almost a kind of a dark blue dots there as well. I do have to say, it gets a little bit bland and kind of plain, almost unfinished, especially at these sections here. I do like the gunmetal gray, almost knee pad armor pads. That looks pretty cool. But I think they should, should have probably continued this uh, almost, you know, uh, polka dot design on these sections here. It seems a bit unfinished for the bottom section of the leg. I do like the orange brown mixture, but again, compared to the rest of the figure, very well designed. Lots of paint apps, lots of uh, details, but the bottom section of the leg seem a bit unfinished to me. What do you think of that? Let me know in the comments. As to the back, very well compact. Of course, we do kind of have the tail just a little bit, you know, uh, put up on against the back, but that really doesn't bother me. It would have been nice to me if there was like a tab to lock into place because that is it. As it is, it just kind of sits there. There's no tab or slot or anything. So, would have been nice if it actually locked into place. But other than that, very well compact, no kibble or anything like that. So, very well designed in my opinion. As for course articulation, the head can look up and down, side to side. This individual um, shoulder section can move out of the way if you want to. And the arm itself can move out. And then of course forward and back, there is a bicep rotation, elbow bends, wrist rotation, and this little Wolverine claw piece can move forward uh, and back as well. And if you do move this whole back panel uh, out of the way, there is fully unhindered waist rotation. The leg can kick forward, back, out to the side. There is knee bends. There is rotation at the leg as well. And of course, there is an ankle pivot forward and back or in and out, which is actually really good to see. We typically do not get that. So that is pretty much it for articulation. I'd say uh, really no complaints. Um, pretty good. You know, wrist rotation, that's sometimes not really a given for figures. So nothing to complain there. Again, I would just say it would be nice if this tail section tapped into place. And again, make sure if you want to use the uh, waist rotation, you have to move this panel away because it will uh, hinder that or stop it and it will get in the way. But that is it for articulation and details. So now for the accessories, I briefly show them in the other mode. There are two really cool kind of spear scythe weapons. I do quite like them. As you can see, they're slightly different in sculpt, but pretty similar. Just that same gun gray at the, the tip or the blade, and we have these little spike sections, which actually look very, very cool. So you can have them dual wield them, which is probably what I'm going to typically do. So you just plug them in his hands. This kind of does remind me of the studio series that fall in his, you know, huge staff would split into two. And this can also combine, which I'll show in just a sec. So you can have them dual wield them like that, which this is probably my preferred look. That's just my opinion. I do quite like that. And you can also have them combine them. So just have one on the top. I don't really think it particularly matters. And then you just peg one, you know, through the bottom like that. Plug it in there. Just line up. And there we have the fully combined staff, which I think is pretty cool. Decently sized. I don't think it's too big. Um, I think that works. And if you want to, I'm not really sure if this is an official feature or part of the robot mode, but the tabs are still in the back. So if you don't want to hold the weapons at all, you can plug this on, both of them in the back for weapon storage, which I think is a pretty nice feature. But there we have the accessories all done. So now for some comparisons, let me just straighten them up a little bit. And push him a bit off to the side. Here he is with the other Voyager of this wave, Battle Trap, which his review is on the channel right now. As you can see, um, you know, this is kind of new territory for us because typically, you know, in the Beast Wars show, Chudor was, you know, typically, he was a pretty small figure, a pretty small bot. He was, you know, kind of like Bumblebee, was one of the smaller uh, characters or figures. So now it's kind of new territory. He's one of the bigger figures, which is uh, a bit interesting. I'm kind of glad they, um, you know, changed it up a bit. And here he is with the Kingdom Chidor, as you can see. As I mentioned, size. This one's much bigger. Um, 
And as I said before, I still do prefer the original design, but as a figure wise, the Studio Series is superior in my opinion. Weapon, the accessory, much better. I never really liked this kind of scythe stick tail thing. Just thought that was the weirdest thing. <laughs> Um, and now for one final comparison, here he is with the fellow Maximal Airazor, and her review should be up on the channel pretty soon. And hopefully, maybe we'll get Rhinox soon. I'd actually, I'd be, I'm pretty interested uh, in Rhinox, and I was really interested in this one because both the Kingdom Rhinox and the Kingdom Chur were not that good of figures. I actually really like the Kingdom Airazor. I have no problems with that. I just thought I'd get this one just to give it a chance. Just interested in their new design for the Rise of the Beast movie, and that is pretty much it for comparisons and this robot mode. So let's now get down to the final thoughts. Now for the final thoughts for the Transformers Studio Series 98 Rise of the Beast Voyager Class Tudor. I think this figure is pretty good. Starting in the robot mode, really like the cool battle mask on the head. It looks super cool with the gunmetal gray and the silver for the eyebrows, the green for the eyes. Just looks awesome. There's actually quite a bit of mechanical detailing on the shoulders. And I really do like all the little blue kind of polka dots or dots across the entire figure. And I do like the Wolverine claws on the hands. That looks super cool. There is a bit of texturing here and there, which I do quite like. I'd say my only complaint, my two complaints for this mode is the tail in the back. It does store in the back, which is really good i'm perfectly fine of the location of it but it would have been nice if there was like a tab or slot or something to actually keep it in place because as it is it kind of just sits there so whenever you're posing this figure around or looking at it it can kind of get in the way and gets a little bit annoying my second complaint for this specific mode is unfortunately the uh, front of the legs at the pretty much the bottom section of the legs is a bit um bare and unpainted there's these really cool gunmetal gray kind of armor pads there which i actually do quite like it uh, quite like it's actually at the knee but uh below that section it's a very kind of plain boring area area and it kind of highlights the fact of how plain they are because the rest of the figure is so well detailed you know there's the claws there's the polka dots there's you know um there's gunmetal gray, there's a lot of mechanical detailing, so this one section right there just seems a bit off. I'm not really sure why they didn't put more of those blue dots, or maybe some more gunmetal gray, or silver, or something there. I, maybe they just ran out of budget, I really don't know. Um, but that's really my only other two complaints for this mode. Really good articulation, there's actually wrist rotation, there's actually in and out uh, ankle pivot, which you really don't see often. Um, so no complaints in the articulation. The accessory is actually really good, way better than the Kingdom version that was some tail scythe thing. I never really understood that. It's actually this really cool long spear weapon, which can split into two. It's actually kind of like the uh, Studio Series The Fallen. I did review that figure on this channel. It actually, it's kind of like that. So it's a staff, you know, it can split into two so you can have him hold it as one solid piece or dual wield. I actually prefer the dual wield. And if you don't want him holding in his hands at all, you can actually store them on the, on the back right here. There's two slots. And of course, there's two tabs on the weapon itself. As for transformation, it's really not that hard for a Voyager class figure. I was actually expecting it to be more complex. I'd say the only part um that can get a little bit more, uh, a little bit annoying is probably the legs because there's several hinges and panels. So it can, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say complex. It can just be a little bit fiddly sometimes. That, that's what I would say. But the rest of the figure, pretty smooth, really easy transformation, and really not that hard. Actually, pretty fun. As for the other mode, the Cheetah mode, again, a major improvement over the Kingdom version. Um, better articulation, way better detailed. As we've all known and heard about, is the Kingdom Cheetah for some reason in the Cheetah mode, the eyes were just like left on painted so it looked like possessed and very weird uh, very off they did a much better job on this one there's really nice mechanical detailing really nice silver gunmetal gray green it just looks really really good um I'd say my only complaint for the cheetah mode is unfortunately um, for the front legs or the front, uh, you know, paws or whatever you want to call them. Um, unfortunately, the hands, because of course the front legs are the uh, arms for this mode, you can actually see the hands kind of off to the side. It really would have been nice if there was like a panel to cover them up, especially from the side profile. It's just a bit off. So um, it would have been nice again if there was like a panel to cover it, but that's a very minor complaint. So from certain views, you can barely even tell they're there. Um, my second complaint would be um, the tail articulation could be a little bit better. That's one of my main hopes. I actually do distinctly remember when I did do a news video on this figure, I was pretty impressed. I thought it was pretty cool. And I was seeing in the video I was going to get it. I was saying my main hope for this figure was I was hoping two things. The accessory would, was I was hoping that was going to be better and they achieved that. I was also hoping the tail articulation was going to be better in this mode. Um, because as I said before in the Kingdom version, that was an accessory, it wasn't a good one, and it was very limited articulation in the Cheetah mode. So would have been nice if there were some added hinges or ball joints or something like that, but unfortunately it's just up and down. So hopefully, just maybe <laughs> if they do another Rise to the Beast chore, maybe they will, uh, maybe they'll improve that as well. But overall, it's a pretty good figure, not a perfect one. Um, 
I like it. Um, do I prefer the original, you know, Beast Wars Cheetor design from the Beast Wars show? Yes, of course. I prefer that design over this one. I still think as of a figure between this one and the Kingdom one, this is a better figure. Um, and who knows, maybe they'll make another version, um, because of course there is going to be that entire separate Rise of the Beast line. You know, this is a part of the studio series. Rumors we're going to get an entire separate, you know, Rise of the Beast line, not affiliated with studio series whatsoever. So maybe we'll get another figure, uh, of Chidor, you know, maybe, uh, I was actually thinking maybe we'll get one without his battle mask, because this figure actually has a battle mask. So maybe we'll have an unmasked version of Chidor. I'd actually be pretty interested to see that. So, um, who knows? Maybe we'll see that down the line. Let me know what you think of this figure in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.